Hey everybody, Devin, the OG, original card nerd. Welcome, 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 welcome back. It's been a few days since I actually threw up a stream. So let me go ahead and set up stuff to make sure everything's running all right and pretty. And we got the chat up. And yes, my beautiful face is down in the lower right hand corner, even though if I, it is a bit overwhelming light wise and probably blinding you like Casper. But hey, that is what it is. All right, so here we are. We're jumping back into what is this? <laughs> Battleground World War II. The uh, Panzer Corps, Panzer General, Allied General clone. Uh, oh, and I did do do did want to say that uh, evidently Panzer Corps Two is coming out. It looks like it's incorporating some of the uh, uh, some of the features from. Uh, 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 order of battle here so i haven't gotten dug too deep into it because i don't need to be getting into another pants for general clone right now i've got this but anyways here we are stepping in this is the third scenario of the panzer craig dlc which is germany pushing into russia 1942 i think it starts off at and i did find yeah 18 may 1942 actually you may not see that because my fat head is probably in the in the way of the turn marker but if you click on the turn marker down here in the lower right hand corner remember how i say it was really annoying to try to find where the cities are on these objectives well come to find out and i was told this by someone who does a lot of computer style wargaming uh that you just click on the question mark and it takes you and highlights what the objectives are, and the really cool thing is down here at the bottom, it tells you objective award. So with this this situation right I've got right here, take these two villages in five turns. Well, it tells me there's one of them right there. Let's see the big red arrow, and then the other big red arrow, so it's easier to find where it's at. But it's also got uh, what the objective reward, award is. Successful application of Blitzkrieg tactics will lead to the promotion of a new army commander, which means I'll get another one of these commanders. Although the one that I had at the start was wounded when I lost my engineers over here. And he's out for eight more turns. But if I capture those two villages within five turns, I'll get another new commander. And we'll see what kind of commander he is. Uh, but so anyways, yeah, we're still working on the premise. that We've got to take my two pincers of my core units of these guys here on the southern flank. These guys here in the northern flank. Take the two villages and meet up here. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. And then start killing basically everything, all Soviet units west of this road line. So that's kind of what the objective is. Let's turn start a turn three of 26. So let's just go ahead and start down here. I'm kind of in good position to start assaulting the, the town. Uh, I'd like to bomb it with these uh, Junkers, but he's got an anti-aircraft unit here, and they're going to shoot the hell out of me. So let's see what we can do. I really hate putting myself into the river. So let's go ahead and just start shooting up the village a little bit. Okay. Yeesh, I took a lot of casualties in that. Hmm. That's not good. Alright, well, I'm gonna have to do it. Push him across the river. Okay, if I attack then he's going to get support from this 47 millimeter. So you know what? Well, let's knock out that 40 or 45 millimeter. Oh, you ran away. Now I could move into the hex that he just vacated like normal, but I don't want to because I can't do a follow-up attack. So let me grab this PZ4 F1, have them move up into it. And let's see. If I attack the village, we'll both be giving support to it. I'll do two casualties. He might do one. But you know what? Let's take out these anti-tank guns. Now I should be able to attack over here, giving me, now that I've got a unit adjacent to it, support. And he doesn't, so I might, I'll, I'll inflict one casualty, might inflict another. And uh, he might inflict one casualty on me. Hey, itinerant hobbyist Pod in the channel. Good friend of my, uh, good friend of the channels. Go check out his military strategy channel. Uh, <laughs> some good old fashioned OG strategy. Well, I don't know if we'd call it strategy. I just kind of flail and, and throw uh, uh, throw uh, <laughs> counters around, and I didn't say I was very good at it. Um, in fact, uh, itinerant hobbyist is actually now doing a playthrough over on his channel of Panzer Blitz version two, the new one. 
uh, from uh, MMP. Uh, the, I think he's doing the first scenario of the Carrington, the new the new box set that came out three four years ago. The old Panzer Blitz remake. I'm not a fan of it, but I'm an old school Crumogen, so what are you gonna do? Ah, uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and keep attacking into the city. And let's move this infantry up. Or not infantry, but artillery. Gotta try to keep pushing across the river. I need more units. Oh. Let's see, that was a bit... Uh-oh. Did I lose my screen? Did not lose my screen. That was a bit of a surprise. So I didn't know that... I actually did know that infantry was there from last turn, but I just forgot about them. But my, uh, my armored cars ran into them, so... I might inflict one, or I'll inflict one and maybe another, but they'll inflict one on me. Uh, you know what, let's bring these. Okay, that's that's a good. We'll bring these infantry over there to soften them up first. Ooh, and he runs away. Fine, I'll follow up. Which, of course, means I lose my attack with the armored car. <laughs> a generate obvious. Oh, I know exactly what I'm going to say here. Yeah, me flailing about like a madman. And other people going, you're an idiot. You don't know how to play these games at all. Well, you're not that far off. I never claimed I was great at these games. All right. Uh, so let's see. What do we got over here? That's pretty much this assault. I was hoping to do a little bit more. But I do have a Stuka. What should I do with this Stuka? Because hmm, if I go after that anti-aircraft gun, well, well, I'll take out three, and he might take out one of mine. Uh, I guess. Move him out of the hex like you can with aircraft. Now what can the BF-110 do? Uh, BF-110 will... Continue strafing those anti-aircraft guns as well. And let's go ahead and move him out of the hex. Oh yeah, it's down to three. I did, what, six or seven casualties to him. So, hopefully if he doesn't have too big of assault and doesn't catch me too badly with my units in the river, hopefully he won't take too many casualties. Uh, let's see, what do we got over here? We got my Falschermjägers. I got my two Falschermjägers. Cost 20 gold to load them in the planes, and I don't want to do that yet. I've only got 69 points to play with right now, so let's not do that yet. So let's move up to the northern flank. And uh, see what we have up here. We're in a little, not much better position. I see he moved that armor up. My infantry is not good at attacking armor. Ugh, this is not good. Well, start flanking anyways. Hey, push him back. Now, again, I I could advance him, but I'm not going to because if I advance there, then these two guys, which could advance forward and still attack, won't be able to. So sometimes it's best not to do a follow-up attack. So now I can move this guy here. Now we can put the herd on that infantry in the city. Ooh, force him out. Now, part of me is tempted to push in there as well, but I don't think I want to because, again... Uh, I've already attacked with this unit, so let's take this PZ4F1, push them forward. Now, which one to take out? I'll be the, either be able to take out the T26s or the infantry. Let's take out the T26s. Ah, almost took them out. Follow up like so. Let's see, those guys need to get casualties, or they've taken casualties. Let's go ahead and reinforce them. Those guys. Okay, these guys we're going to get out of the river. And shoot at those Soviet infantry. Now, I can push them forward, but they'll be in the river. I don't want to put them in the river, especially when they're right next to an anti-tank gun. Especially a big one like a 76mm. So, what can we do with this infantry? Ooh, we can push this infantry. Ooh, they've actually got some pretty good movement. So, uh, do we go after the T26s, or do we go after the 76 millimeters? Um, that's a good call. I think I am going to go after the anti-tank guns. Man, 
And I am going to push forward on that one so I can keep these guys a little bit honest. Let's see. I've got a couple aircraft up here. I got those BF 109s. And we've got some uh, Soviet Ilyushkin. The IL 2, I think I pronounced that right. Ilyushkin, yeah. So let's go ahead. And get some air combat going on. Oh, that's good. I killed what? Five or six of his units, or five or six points of his, and didn't take any casualties. So that's good. I think this tank is the last one I have left to move. Uh, Attendant Hobbyist, what size of the units you're commanding? How many in each hex? Um, it, it, with Order of Battle, it doesn't really say. Uh, I, I don't want to call them divisions. I don't want to call them regiments. I don't think it actually says you know how big each unit is supposed to be. Um, it's just, all right, here's here's a Panzerkampfwagen unit. It's got 10 strength points, so it's at 100% of whatever it is supposed to be. And, you know, basically each strength point is 10% of its total strength lost. Uh, but, yeah, I don't think I don't think in Panzer General, Allied General, I don't even think all the way into, into those old games it actually gave an idea of what the exact formation sizes were. I mean, it's a little bit of an abstract game. We're, we're not talking, this is not hardcore <laughs> World War II simulation. It's push push counters around and and uh, shoot up stuff and have some pretty cool graphics when you're doing it. Uh, and again, since I really don't know where the Soviet pushes are going to come from, actually with him, since it looks like we've got a little bit of a push over here, let's move these infantry up. Uh, okay, we got infantry coming here. We've got infantry deck in there. That's fine. We've got tons of Kampfwag and twos is reserved. We won't move them. Now let's go way over here. Yeah, uh, that big push the Soviets did last turn to capture those two. And I just don't have anything over here that could pinch that off. I can move these infantry out, but as soon as I move those infantry out, the computer will know it, and we'll we'll move infantry over there, or tanks at least. All right, well. We got. We do have a little bit of a of a thrust here, uh, so we're gonna have to try to see what we can do to stop that. Let's take these infantry. Oh, um, where do we want to move them to? I want to leave them out in the open and start attacking the enemy directly, or kind of move them into the city where they have a little bit of defense. You know what, let's see, what is that hex considered? One of the nice things, you can click on a hex, and right down here at the bottom, it'll tell you what the terrain type is, and then you click on the information, you know, combat factor, defense factor, cover percentage, you know, all that kind of good stuff, if you're into that sort of thing. But leaving infantry in the open with armor and artillery around is probably generally not a good thing. So let's just go ahead and move those guys right to there. At least they're on the bridge. And it's considered a town hex, so they'll get town defense. Now my Stugs here. Katayusha's OTs. I can present it to the artillery armor. Artillery armor. Let's go after the armor. If I move there, I'm gonna get shot from all different ah, screw it. Let's do it. Let's push forward and get shot from all different sides. I uh, got some infantry down here. I suppose I can start moving them up this way to help. It's not a victory point location. There's really nothing back here. So if I do move this infantry out, I mean, it's not like it's going to, hopefully, not going to be that. Yeah, so let's move these guys up here. Use them to try to help pinch off this, uh, this thrust that the Soviets are doing. I think that's all I want to do. I mean, I don't. Pretty much, I don't want to use the Romanians because they're crap troops. We'll, we'll leave them in defensive positions. Um, don't want to load up my Falschermagers. And pretty much everybody else is hanging out in reserve while I try to figure out uh, where... Oops. Close. Where the Soviet thrusts are going to come at. So yeah, I think I think we're good with that. Hit the intern. Yes, I know some of my units can still move or attack. All right, 
Let's see what the Soviets are gonna do. Fighting around the city, no surprise, reinforcing some of their units. Sometimes it's not a good idea to reinforce your units right next to an enemy unit because you only get a maximum of two strength points back. So, but hey, if the Soviets want to do that rather than pulling back, I'm all for it. As soon as this turns over, there's a couple things I want to point out. Recon unit not uh, expanding the front lines, and he uh, cut off one of my units. So let's wait for combat to get over. I knew that Stug was going to get shot from every direction. My poor little Stug. Alright, turn overview. Yeah, nothing's really changed. Nothing new. We've got some more per, uh, production points. Alright, enemy regroups. Uh-oh. After realizing the danger of, give, of getting outflanked, Soviet forces that, uh, have abandoned their attack on Krasnograd. Uh, okay. Is that Krasnograd? Where is Krasnograd? That's Kharkov. That may be Krasnograd. That's one of the things. It doesn't always exactly... Let's take a look at the map. And it doesn't say on the big map either. Oh, well. Well, whatever, they're, whatever they were attacking, they're calling off their attack. All right, so let's, uh, let's take a look here at this little issue I have over here on the west. All right. Well, ugh. two casualties, and I might inflict... Or no, he might inflict two on me. I'm still up casualty wise. Yeah, he inflicted one. Is that a Valentine? Oh, that is a Valentine. Lindley's Valentine. <laughs> British Lindley's vehicles. Very cool. Uh, all right, so let's see. This infantry. Hey, you can kind of see, depending on what terrain you're in will determine how well your attacks are. So if I move to this bridge hex, I'll inflict two casualties, maybe a third, and he'll inflict two on me. I move into this open hex, I'll inflict three casualties on him, and he might inflict two on me. So I think we're going to move right here. Push him back. There we go. Uh, I want to leave this German heavy infantry here. They're dug in really well. I don't want to, to mess with their... Their dug in status, the stug. Okay, so I'm kind of pushing him back a little bit. Uh, okay, now remember when I was saying that you don't want to replace units next to enemy troops? Sometimes you kind of have to, and this is a situation where I just don't have the strength to really knock out any of those units, but it would behoove me better. You like that? That's a big word. Behoove behoove me to repair them in place so I get two more points back so at least I'll be a little bit better prepared when they when they attack me and hopefully I will inflict more casualties than they inflict on me uh, let's see what are we doing the Romanians here nothing with the Romanians here nothing 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 uh, okay so you remember that last turn or two turns ago turn two the Soviet tanks I think actually I think it was this BT-7 that ran all the way up here up here and captured these and it looks like he's now coming back 
the only reason I was able to capture that hex back is it's next to a fox, my, my MG foxhole. So that kind of cut his lines of supplies. So that guy is now out of supply. You can kind of see there's a there's a red circle next to his strength number. It means he's out of supply. He fights at, at reduced. Uh, and I could shoot at him with my you know, machine gun, but, you know, well, eh. I might do one casualty to him now. I didn't do anything. He's probably not going to do anything to me. Yeah. So that is what kind of the front lines of being out of supply is like. And I kind of wanted to show that over here with this infantry I had here. I pushed them down across the bridge and here. But then he moved his tank in behind me. Thus, you know, basically cutting the lines of supply. That's what this, this front line represents. Not a big deal. Let's see. Let's take this infantry here. This SS infantry. Have them attack the T-26. out the T-26s, and then take this Panzerkampflog in F1, and push him down the river, or down the road, opening back up the lines of supply, and taking out some anti-aircraft guns in the process. Now, technically, I am no longer cut off, but I am still considered out of supply because it checks out at the beginning of the turn, so even though I have opened up the front lines and opened up the lines of supply to him again, I've still got that red dot on him, so he's going to fight uh, a little bit out of out of, uh, uh, out of of supply. Al Red Sox fan! What's up, Al? How are you, my friend? Good friend of the channel. I think I've said it before, and anybody who's watched the channel knows who Al Red Sox fan is. Go check out his channel for all things sports gaming, computer, and board and card. Uh, card and dice. And he does a roundtable that I am part of once a week. Him, Dog Sidious, myself. Uh, we just invited Comics with Bueller into it and uh, Stratomatic Delaware. We all kind of do a pop culture and sports roundtable on Saturday nights, 10 o'clock Eastern. Uh, and we need to get uh, we need to get Todd in one of those one of these times. We've talked about getting Todd, the itinerant hobbyist, in, in one of our roundtables. So we need to talk uh, talk about getting Todd in with us one of these as a guest speaker, so to say. All right, so what do we got? Uh, let's see. He tried pulling his aircraft back. Let's go ahead and fence. Let's take the big BF-109. Well, that's just cool. I like that. Uh, okay, so we knocked out the aircraft. And see, oh, the poor little rubble of the aircraft was left behind. A burning wreck on the vi on the riverside. Um, all right, so let's go ahead. That's not strafing. That's not going to do any good. Fighters aren't really good at attacking ground objects. So... <laughs> okay, we do know he's got a couple fighters over here. Because our radar shows up that he has fighters. We just don't know what they are. Um, now, I don't think I want to move my one lone fighter over there by himself. I'll wait until next turn. I'm getting kind of low on eh, five turns of fuel left on both of them. That's what the seven slash five, nine slash five is. Five is how many turns of flight they have left. I may drive. I probably should pull them back. Next turn to an airfield to refuel. All right, so that's the aircraft there. What have we got? We've got this infantry. Let's push this infantry forward. Good thing is, pound for pound, at this point of the war, Sherman infantry is always going to be better than Soviet infantry. Just, you know, the way it is. So I always know I'm going to inflict more casualties on him. But, let's see, this guy's in the village, but he's down to five. Let's go ahead and reinforce him a little bit. This guy is next to T-26s. I mean, even fighting against the T-26s, my infantry, you know, do okay. Mm, let's see. You know what? Let's take these engineers and attack those T-26s. Flaming Werfen against Panzers. Hey, there we go. Knocked him out. Not going to advance into the X. No need for me to. That's, yeah, see, the casualties were saying I was going to do two, maybe another one, two plus, but I did manage to do three, and he wasn't able to, to withdraw. Usually when they get pretty low on that and they take casualties, they usually end up withdrawing. Uh, so, yes, <laughs> as Al says, T-26 goes boom, it goes boom. Uh, so what do we got left over here? I think I've got this Panzerkampflagen 4. 
Uh, you know what? Let's at least get him across the river so he's not attacking from the river anymore. Uh, so that's a nice little... Yeah, I, I like how the progress of this is going so far. Managed to capture that. All right, so let's head down to this village. Okay, let's take the outline things first. Uh, let's take this Gabagas Diego. Oh, yeah, the other thing I was going to mention. Recon units do not push the front lines back. They're, the recon units, they're light. They don't capture territory. You can't use them to capture cities. But they move really far, and, you know, they do the whole reconnaissance thing. So let's move him over here and finish off that Soviet infantry. Sometimes you want to try to finish off units as quick as you can because you don't want the, you don't want the Soviets coming back and repairing them. Uh, all right. Oh, he moved his anti-aircraft gun. Yeah, let's knock out those anti-aircraft guns. Even if I don't knock him out, and I think I'm going to, at the minimum, that w he would have retreated, which allows me to push forward, opening up a unit from behind to move forward. Let's not attack yet. Let's try bombing him with the Stukas. And just because planes are very fast-moving aircraft and they don't have to stay in the hex they bomb, let's move him into adjacent hex. Of course, obviously, aircraft can't capture airfields or land units, so it's not like I'm going to be capturing that airfield even though I'm sitting on it. Uh, let's see, BF-110. There, the Soviet heavy infantry is in, is in the town, so I might inflict one casualty, or I can come over here and strafe the hell out of these engineers in the open, which I will definitely get one casualty, and then maybe another. Alright, these guys are wounded, let's pull them back, and start repairing them. Also, if you use, if you move a unit uh, and repair them after that, you're only going to get uh, uh, two... Uh, two of your replacement points back. So we can now move this guy here, and let's put the big hurt on the village. Yes, draw them, ooh, draw them back two spaces. So let's capture, yes! We have captured both of the villages in the time allotted, and commander enlisted, Herman Balk. A new commander is available, can be, can be attached to one of your units. Well, let's see what Herman Balk can do. Let's click on him. He is attacks against land infantry plus two. So I can attach him really to anything. And if he attacks anybody, any infantry, he gets plus two strength attacking infantry. So do I attach him to an infantry or do I attach him to an armor? For now, let's attach him to an infantry and we're going to stick him with that German heavy infantry. And his, you know, his little portrait pops up down here. German heavy infantry 42 and with his, with his portrait right there. So that's, that's a cute little portrait. <laughs> Let's go ahead and keep moving these uh, Germans across the across the river and keep up with pressing the assault. Always keep moving. Always keep attacking. Hmm. Don't like getting my artillery too far ahead, but this thing's only got a range of two hexes, anyways. Move it, move the location to where I want it to, and take a look where he can shoot at and who he's going to inflict the most casualties on. So it looks like that anti tank gun up there. So we'll go ahead and shoot at that anti tank gun. Right, two casualties to him, that's not bad for artillery. Now, in the older games, like in uh, uh, Panzer Blitz, or not Panzer Blitz, <laughs> Panzer General, Allied General, the, the older games, even into Panzer Corps, using artillery w first would s kind of soften up the target. I don't remember the exact mechanics of it, but it would make it easier for follow-on units to attack uh, whatever it is you bombarded. I don't know if that is, is in order of battle, but I do remember that used to be a thing in, uh, in Panzer General and Allied General Panzer Corps. I probably should I probably should check that because it's probably important. Artillery on its own usually doesn't do much damage. Even the great big old 150 millimeters you might do, you know, if you're lucky, two, maybe three infantry casually. But the important thing about it is it would soften them up 
So that further attacks that turn would be more successful. And I think that's just the same case because you kind of see the, the, the strength number in that 76 millimeter. It's now orangish yellow. So I think that may indicate that artillery hit it and it softened it up. So further attacks on that unit this turn will be more successful. Of course, I don't have any follow-up attacks right now because I basically moved everybody down here. Uh, so, but yeah, just something good to know for the future. Uh, okay, do I want to load up my Fallschirmjäger? Mm, no, let's, let's, let's not load up my Fallschirmjäger. And if you'll notice, I haven't moved my Fallschirmjäger for several turns, so they've been able to build up their, their sandbags. They've improved their positions where they're at, so that's, that's a good thing. And I honestly think that's it. I don't think, yeah, we knocked out that T26. I got this big old cup 88s. Well, I could move. Oh, you know what? Uh, no, I think I'll keep these 88s here. I mean, I could move them here, and I could possibly wipe out that armored car unit, but I would be in the open without any defenses, and anti-tank guns out in the open without any defenses die really quick to infantry. Again, remember, this is still primarily rock, paper, scissors. Armor beats guns. Guns beat infantry. Infantry beats armor. That's just kind of the way it is with some deviation and minor fudging with the types of units like if you have no no i did that wrong yes infantry beats guns guns beat tanks tanks beat infantry that's the triangle ah helps if i get it see this is why i'm not a clever man so uh, i think we're all done i don't have any points i want to spend we're not moving the romanians because we don't know if there's going to be any attacks coming from these villages here so yeah, basically it's it's still both 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 flanks, both both pincers moving on to Petro 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 mm, Patrol. <laughs> Death village right here. And I know this has gotta annoy my annoy my buddy Stuart to no end. Guy speaks fluent Russian, so <laughs> sorry, Stuart. Uh, so let's go ahead and end the turn. Yes, I know units can still move or attack. In the turn, anyways. Yeah, see, he's shooting at me, and the number is turning to a different color. So I'm thinking that artillery does do something to the defense of whoever you're shooting at. So yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to check the rules. I'm gonna have to follow up on that and uh, nail down specifically what the uh, what the rules are. Oh, that's bad. That's why I don't like getting artillery too close to the front line. But, you know, it's with only a range of two, what the hell are you going to do? Oh. Well, we know he's got a tank moving up that way. Hello, Mr. Armored Cars. Shoe Cars! Got a buddy of mine. We used to play uh, Flames of War miniatures game. And he used to run Soviets. He loved running Soviets. And uh, I can't remember what the official designation of them was. But they always called them shoe cars because from the side they look kind of like a little shoe. Gotta love those caddies. Kadushas. Now that's a tank I need to fear. That's a T-34. We don't like T-34s. T-34s are bad. Come on, people. There's five of you in chat. I know I'm one. I know Todd and Al are two more, so I got two other people. You, you, you can speak in chat. We are friendly people. Al's especially friendly. He'll love to. He chats with anybody any time of the day. And you can all blame Todd for introducing me to Al, so. It's all Todd's fault. Yes, now his armor is going after my infantry. Ah, flamethrowers, you bad. But I'm putting a hurt on him. 
I mean, I'm reducing him to one and two strength, and he's pulling guys back. Oh, hello, Mr. Little One-Seater Soviet Fighter. Oh, those little stub noses. I can never remember the name of them. I do kind of think they're kind of cute. <laughs> oh, T-34. T oh. Infantry don't stand up real good to D-34. Okay, uh, new turn. Nothing's really changed any. Uh, okay, facing the imminent threat of encirclement. More Soviet forces are trying to break out of the pocket. Yeah, we know what that means. That means I am now going to be facing lots and lots of attacks right around my, where my two pincers are moving. Uh, so what else? What else? What else? Okay, And that's one thing I do like about Order of Battle is it does get those little pop-ups every once in a while to let you know what's going on with the flow of battle and little, just little surprises that would pop up everywhere. I don't remember that in Panzer Corps. I don't. Rem I definitely wasn't an ally general with the old Panzer generals. And this was a very stupid thing for that recon, that armored car. Let's go ahead and put ourselves right next to the Krupp 88s. Gee, the armored car didn't stand up too long to those 88s, did they? Really? All right, let's go ahead and chase those guys down. Flamin' Vaffin! Oh, come on! I wasn't able to knock it out. Poop. All right, well, let's get those guys some reinforcements. See, since he wasn't adjacent to an enemy unit and he didn't move, he got five strength points back, so that's a good thing. All right, oh, what do we have? Uh, the Polikarpov. The I-16. It's a cute little plane. Can't zoom any further, but he's just a cute little snub nose. And the yak. Yaks were good planes. I, I, I always kind of liked the yaks. But anyways, let's, let's see. Let's go ahead and take down the... If I remember correctly, that was an interwar design. That was one of the first uh, combat aircraft... Uh, in world that predated World War II, that actually went to a to a to a single wing, a mono wing design, rather than like the biplanes they had in World War One. I. I think that was one of the first mono wing fighter designs. I could be wrong. I probably am. All right, let's see. He's got four strength points. Yeah, let's get him out of there. I hate to leave my one one oh nine behind, but I need to get him to an airfield. The closest airfield is the one I'm about to capture there. Move there, and the good thing is it opens up recon a little bit. Ah, T 34s. Knew they were coming because I saw one zip around here. Um, okay, so that was the aircraft up here. That was him. Now, let's see how we're going to pursue the rest of this attack. Let's see, I can knock out three, maybe three infantry, or definitely three tanks. No casualties either way. Let's take out the tanks. Burn. All right, those guys, they're not adjacent to an enemy unit. I don't want to move them, so let's reinforce them. That gives them five points back. This tank, we want to play with the T-34s. Yeah, F-1 versus the T-34. T-34 has a slight edge in that fight, I would say. Uh, let's see what we got here. We can knock out one infantry, or we can knock out six artillery pieces. We got six artillery pieces. Probably going to force them to retreat. Yes. Let's go ahead and move into that position. That'll let me move this SS infantry up a little bit. Not that. Do I want to advance? No, I don't want to advance them. But we will take these guys. Ooh. We can move further than I thought. Ooh, good choice. Do I knock out the anti-aircraft guns or knock out the infantry? Let's knock out the infantry. Choices. Decisions. 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 Yay. All right. I think that's everybody up here with the northern flank. Still, well, I've shot with the corrupt, so I don't want to do anything. Panzerkampfwagen Mark II. I think it's kind of safe for me to move him now. I think I can move forward and at least support. Yeah. <laughs> Speedy little tank. Uh, 
Do I pursue him across the river? No. I'm not going to pursue him because if he's got any forces over here, I have a feeling he's going to advance him on me next turn. So I'm not pursue the armored car across the river. All right. Southern flank. The southern push here. Let's see. Part of me is tempted to go over here and try to take this village with this infantry and these, this recon, but I don't think I'm going to have the strength. So do I push and... Eh, let's have them just push and rejoin the main thrust. So let's take these guys and get them some replacements. And that costs me repl my, 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 my gold coins. <laughs> my gold coins down here, my, my, my replacement points. Every time... Oh, and you probably can't see because my fat head is in the way. Let me take a look at OBS. Ah, uh, no, it's not. My fat head isn't in the way. Okay. <laughs> you can kind of see my uh, my how many how many pr production points I have, and I'm only getting 18 a turn. And you know, it costs depending if I use normal reinforcements or elite reinforcements. You know, it costs me more production points. So. Kind of have to be a bit judicious. Now, you remember, I started out with 500 at the beginning of the scenario. But it cost me like 400 just to repair and refit all my guys from the last scenario. With a pain in the butt. Alright, let's see. Yep, he'll go in and capture the airfield. And let's shoot up that anti-tank gun. And he will pursue. Alright, let's see. Let's pull this Panzerwerfen back. Uh, it's not even really worth shooting. Well, no. If, if if it actually does soften the unit up, go ahead and attack that Valentine, and then follow up. Eh, I don't actually. Yeah, see, it didn't change the number, so I don't know. I'm gonna have to definitely gonna have to read up on what effects the artillery does. Surprised? I'm only gonna do one, maybe two casualties to that Valentine. I mean, I knew the Valentines were kind of tough tanks, but it's Valentines going up against Mark, uh, Panzer F1s. Now, granted, they those are the short-barreled 75s with the F1s, not the long-barreled 75s. But now we're getting into rivet counting. Try to avoid rivet counting. All right. So I got my Stuka. Who do we want to wipe out? We got a couple units that have got one. Could hit the Valentines. I can knock out the infantry. I can knock out that artillery. Those are about the two units I can knock out. Let's go after the artillery. Yay! Alright, uh, that was the fighter that we moved earlier, so we've got this airfield. He'll be able to land there, refuel, and I can sp get re spend replacement points to bring him back up to strength. Airfields are the only places you can do that. You can't really do it anyplace else. And you know what? Part of me, I would really love to get those Falsham Jaegers loaded up. It just costs too many damn points. And as I'm already struggling with, uh, with production points. So, I think that's everybody down here. Yeah, I think that's everybody there, and that's all my northern flank stuff. Did we do anything over here? I don't think we did anything over here. We got German infantry. You know what? Let's get them back up to full. Let's get them and get them a couple more strength points back, so they can. I can either I can knock out those OT tanks, and then he'll have five points. And nah, yeah, let's let's just reinforce. I think better to reinforce him a couple points so he can survive more rather than just trying to knock out one tank and then having to survive two attacks from those units. Uh, all right, so well, let's go with this infantry to knock out that infantry. Yay. I'll take... Ooh! Let's, let's move those shugs there. Who do we want to take out? Oh, let's take out the caddies. Uh, that 
actually, the, you know, the color of the number may be the supply level. I need to look into how supply works a little bit more. I've kind of ignored it. Oh, we got here. Oh, ooh, yep. I'll inflict maybe four casualties. Granted, it's a oh, it's a BT7. Okay, BT7's early war tanks not that great. And actually, I think that's everything. Let's see, where is my button that I can flip through everything? There is a way I can flip through. I think it's just next. Nope. Is it the arrow keys? Nope. Is it... There is a way that you can flip through all the units that haven't moved yet. I just don't remember what the keyboard command is. Eh, not that important. Uh, so, quick scan to see if... Uh... Oh, yeah, these guys right here. We were going to do something with them. Eh, you know what? Let's... Let's just kind of move around the flanks. There's artillery. Yeah, see, the artillery fired at him, and it didn't change the color. So, all right, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to look into that a little bit more. All right, I think that's it. Let's go ahead and end our turn and see what those nasty red commies are gonna do. Chrissy of Old Stone! Hi, Chrissy! Glad you can make it over here eventually. Glad you can make it. Everybody check out Chrissy of Old Stone's channel. Um, she does book readings. Uh, she just got done doing, I think, The Raven. And uh, there's some talk that she's going to do a Cthulhu short story for Halloween coming up. But she's got a lot of uh, uh, novelizations that she has read. And you know what? While I'm here actually looking in the chat... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make Al a moderator. And I keep forgetting to do this. And we're going to go ahead and make Todd a moderator. And we like Chrissy so much. She's a good moderator. She's in a lot of other channels. We're going to make Chrissy of Old Stone a moderator here as well. Mainly the moderators just kind of keep an eye on things in case trolls come up. doesn't happen much in my channel because you know, who follows me, right? <laughs> But in some of the other channels that I, I jump into and watch the streams of, uh, occasionally trolls will get in there. And you know, while I'm doing this, I don't have the chat up, so it's good to have the moderators in channel to kind of keep an eye on that. And I've been meaning to stick moderators in for a while. It's just I've been forgetting every time. But yep, uh, go over and subscribe to Chrissy's channel if you like like uh, like audio novelizations, audio novel audioization. Well, I wouldn't put that. Books being read, let's put it that way. And I'm sure if you're really really nice to her, you make a special request to something that's not too big, she might do it. Maybe. I'm not promising anything. Of course, here I am committing her to. <laughs> Chrissy may not do that at all. And probably cursing under her breath at me right now. Don't do that. Don't commit me to things. Sorry. Uh, what are you doing trying to cross the river? Oh, there was something I wasn't expecting. Yeah, cut me off there. No big surprise. I kind of figured that was... Oh, that's a big sounding tank. Is that a KV? Oh, God. I think that's a KV. KVs suck even worse than T-34s. Mainly because they're huge armor they had on those stupid things. I mean, their 76mm was an absolute crap pop gun. But their armor... Man, they were some of the heaviest armored... tanks of the war at the time. They really want those infantry gone. Probably a good thing I buffed them up a little bit. Ooh, that's not good. What is that? That's a looks like a bomber. P 
computer's always throwing surprises at me. And he's got a lot of aircraft. Kind of at least, what, four so far? All right. Uh, yeah, not much has changed in the turns. So let's see what our status is. <laughs> ben Hogan, welcome, welcome, welcome. Glad you could join us. Uh, let's see, what do we want to do? Let's go ahead and start over here in the west, and let's try to deal with this conundrum. I, I see, I really, I'm definitely, after this stream is over, I'm going to have to break out the book. I really need to know what those colored numbers mean. So, let's see. Let's go ahead and have my infantry knock out those OTs. Oh god, flames! Ah. Have this stug move down here and knock out those T-60s. Much better position now. Now, the Gabigas Jaeger, the mountain troops. Do I chase them after the Valentine, or the caddies, or go after the infantry? Let's chase down the infantry. Ah! I said chase them down. Don't let him get away. All right, this infantry is in not a good position. I get an attack from two sides, and I really don't have any reinforcements in the area. Okay, remember what I keep saying about not reinforcing when you're next to an adjacent unit? This is one of those situations where I need to hold this, and I can't afford to attack those T-34s or those BA-10s. They're shoe cars. Uh, although I suppose I could move this heavy infantry that way. How far can I get? Eh, be in the trucks out there. That's bad. We don't want to do that. So they're just going to have to hold as much as they can. Now, that's a surprise. I was expecting Soviets to attack. Hmm. Do I try to capture that village? <sighs> yeah, let's... Let's try to push forward... If anything, maybe try to relieve some pressure. Let's take this infantry. Let's, you know what? Let's commit this infantry up here. Now let's take those 88s and stick them in the village, so they'll even be more defense defensible. Gonna lose their defensive position. Lost their sandbags when they move, but as, as long as they don't move anymore for the next couple turns, they'll be, build their defensive perimeter back up again. Uh, let's see. Hey, Stratomatic Delaware, Chris, good friend of the channel. All things baseball, sports, card games, and uh, Chris of Stratomatic Delaware is one of our one of our uh, uh, what do we call ourselves? Our board. I was just mentioning it earlier. Chris is one of the guys on our panel. That's it. That's the word I was looking for. Our panel on Friday on Friday nights. Some Friday nights and Saturday nights. I think Dog is doing Dog City is all things Star Wars is doing a. Uh, all things Star Wars chat tonight. So if you're interested in Star Wars, go ahead and do a search for Dog Sidious and uh, join him in his stream that he's going to do. I think it's going to do about 10 o'clock Eastern tonight. Just why I don't want to run this too long so I don't interfere with his uh, what his stream is. All right, let's get our head back in the game. Let's see. Aircraft. We captured this airfield. So we need to get those guys there so they can... Refuel, so you land up, move them on the airfield. And whenever you move an aircraft on an airfield, you actually have to hit the button, land on carrier or airfield to store inside. Now it changes that there's a little hangar right there, and the unit is in the hole, and basically you just leave it there for one turn. Um, and then they'll get their fuel back, and you can store up to like six aircraft in a, in a hangar or something silly like that. Let's see, BF-110, uh, Tupolev. Yeah, let's go after these bombers. That's one good thing heavy, the German, the BF-110, the heavy fighters are good at going after enemy bombers. Because they're not really that good at being fighters. Advance into there. All right. Keep working on that 
artillery piece. Yeah, push him off the hill. Yay. All right. So back to this little conundrum we have here. Artillery. Nothing's in range. I don't want to move them up. It's not one of my core units. Do I want to waste the resource points to get... No, I don't think I'm going to spend the resource points on getting him back up to full strength. I've got more important things to do. All right. Um, heavy infantry can knock out those shoe cars. Ah, Tony, first gen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Heading to bed real soon. Glad you were able to pop in and take a look-see at what we're doing here today. Okay, what are those? Valentines. Yeah, 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 yeah. let's keep working on the Valentines. I uh, don't like having much on my flanks if I'm going to be pushing on to this village here. So as much as it pains me to do it, commit that armor to going after those half the cavalry. And we'll take these guys and have them play with the Valentines. Let's see, these guys, uh, they're in not, uh, there's only six of them, let's get them at least up to strength a little bit. All right, I think that's all for my southern flank. Oh, nope, these German infantry. Let's go ahead and move them up. Let's see. My Junkers. Oh, my Junkers. Yeah, they'll go after the T-34s. Stukas are good at going after T-34s. Okay. One casualty with the armor. Two casualties with the infantry. Well, let's take a look. i got to clear out this infantry. I don't like all this infantry back here. But you know what? Let's just go ahead and keep pressing forward. Try to try to use these panzers to blow a hole open to uh, get back to my own lines. Oh, I didn't force the infantry back. That's disappointing. Well, let's take this infantry and move it here. Blow those guys out. That should open up the hole, and then I'll advance in. Yay! And then that opens the line of supply back up. Take those guys, knock out those infantry in the woods, try to anyways. Didn't go as well as I planned. So, what to do with this infantry? Knock out the anti-aircraft guns, put a herd on the infantry, put a herd on the T-26s, or put... Oh, you know what? He's only got two... He's only got four T-34s left. So let me go ahead and beat on those T-34s some more. And then we'll take the Panzerkampfwagen. Ow! Oh, didn't finish him off. Damn it! But forced him back, so that 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 puts that drive in pretty good position. We like how that's forming up. Uh, those guys, let's get. Oh, I'm out of points. Oh no, they already repaired. Okay. What do we have over here? Let's take this infantry. Oh, they've already. Oh, I guess I've moved with everything. I guess that would be everything. I think that's it for the for the turn. Those guys reinforced. Yep. I did my little counterattacks down over here. So yeah, I think I'm done with my turn. Attack the artillery on the hill. So let's see what we got. Actually, let's zoom it. I don't like being zoomed out too much. I like being close up so I can actually see what's going on. I like being zoomed in. I mean, sometimes I lose a bit of the big picture. But I don't care. I just want to see the cool, the cool graphics. Oh, and speaking of cool graphics, uh, I just started playing uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. <laughs> Talk about a beautiful game. I'd say I've always loved the Assassin's Creed series. And Odyssey 
just takes it up to the next level. There's a lot of games that, that, that have been, that if there's a series of them that go on for years and years, like Assassin's Creed have, they just start to lose something. Assassin's Creed injects a little bit of something really cool every few games to make it really give give the longev give the game some longevity. Uh, Black Flag, uh, Assassin's Creed 4, which was actually about the eighth game. Cause Assassin's Creed 2 was uh, Brotherhood, and you know Assassin's Creed 2 was like four or five different games. Um, but Black Flag, Assassin's Creed 4 introduced or didn't introduce. But it had the naval warfare with the ship combat, and you had this uh, galleon, and it was, uh, you know, cannon warfare. It was, oh, what are you doing knocking me out of there, bastards? Uh, I'm going to have to, uh, that's not good. Um, so, the, the pirate ship in Black Flag was just phenomenal. One of the best games in the series. And Assassin's Creed has kind of been, been slipping a little bit the last, the last three or four games. But uh, the last game they did... Uh, Origins, which was set in ancient Egypt, they kind of start turning it into more of a role-playing game, where you have skill trees that you can build up and experience points and all that other stuff. And the, the one thing I've always liked about Assassin's Creed is that whatever game that they're doing is kind of proof of concept for the next game that they're going to do. That's actually really bad what they just did. They cut off my entire... Oh, and they killed off those units. Crap. That is really bad. Really, 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 really bad. Uh, but every game they do is a proof of concept. But if the things work in one game, they're really going to jump on it the next game. So Assassin's Creed uh, Odyssey just came out absolutely beautiful. And it is definitely more of a full-on role-playing game now. You know, you've got your experience, you've got your levels, you've got your skill trees that you can build up. And it's, and it's I'm having a lot of fun with it. Huge game, huge map. I've been thinking of doing some streams of it. But most of my subscribers are, are ex encounter gamers, so I don't know how most of my subscribers would take to me doing, uh, you know, playing Assassin's Creed. I guess the only way we can find out is if we actually try it. Now, I was saying this was really, really bad. Why is that really, really bad? Because they just cut off all these units, and these units are now out of supply. That is bad. So that means I need to try to relieve my forces down here and try and take back, at least open up one hex. Yeah, like right here. There we go. That opens. I mean, my guys are still going to fight out of supply, but Ugh, he's only got two guys left in his. Did I already do something with them? I don't think so. Oh, I'm cut out. Yeah, since he started off the turn cut off from supply, he can't, uh, I can't reinforce him. But I can at least take out those anti-aircraft guns. So we'll do that. Uh, how aggressive do we want to be? Really aggressive. Now nope, he's got probably infantry there. We don't want to move there or get shot from several different sides. Now yeah, let's just move him there. And normally, I'd be doing a lot more damage to these units, but since they were cut off at the beginning of the turn, they're fighting at reduced strength. Stuka. Oh, let's use the Stuka to... Oh, nope, I had the Panther. Oh, well, that's fine. As long as I take out that Stuka, or take out that D-34. Uh, Stuka's only got four strength points left. Let's get it back to the airfield. Have him land. Uh, have... This BF-109 land, and I had the one in the cargo hold, Ugh, 22 gold for me to get him back up to full strength. He's got a lot of aircraft. I think I'm going to need to, I think I'm going to need to do it because he's got a lot of aircraft out there. Let's see, what happened to those two? He must have pulled those two blood bombers back. All right, so my heavy bomber, or my heavy fighter, ah, he's only got three turns of fuel. Eh. Land him as well. So my entire air force is grounded right now. Great. Uh, should see. Now let's use the tanks to push on. And 
We'll use this infantry to knock out those Valentines. There we go. And rest of these Panzers to move on. Chipping away at that cav. So much so we'll bring the armored cars to play with them as well. There's no real zones of control in this, so as long as there's a hex that they can escape from, they're gonna escape. Let's see... I don't think I'm gonna see much attacks coming from this direction. So I don't think I need to leave the two infantry over here defending, so let's just... Yeah, and since basically I have to destroy everything west of this village anyways, let's go ahead and pull this infantry off and start pushing westwards. Now what I could do is take this infantry right here, start moving them up this road to push the front lines back. And if I if if I actually manage to get the connected, so say if I follow this road line with the front line, if he doesn't have any units in there, I'll capture all that territory. Not that, you know, it does anything for me. It doesn't give me any any points or anything like that. But you know what, let's just go ahead. Oh bad, 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 bad. Yeah, alright, that was stupid. Stupid OG, stupid OG. Yeah, we're going to run them back to town after. Uh, here I am thinking, oh, he doesn't have any units over there. Yeah, you should have known he had units over there. Idiot. Uh, well, let's see. I think I did. Oh, I haven't done anything over here. Uh, okay, let's go ahead. Let's see, what is that? That's considered farmland, so let's go ahead and go there. Shoot those conscripts up some more. Okay. Knock out that tank. Ah, oh, still not knocking out those caddies. They're trucks. My stug should be just blowing them to pieces. Ah, oh, well. Uh, let's see. Do I have anybody else I want to do anything with? Oh, those guys are just kind of sitting tight. Yeah, if I attack the T-34s, I'll, I might do two casualties. They'll do three to me. Yeah, we're, we're going to sit in our defensive positions. We like sitting in holes. Uh, that, okay, that'll, that'll do some casualties on those armored cars. Not going to advance it forward because that'll pull me out of the defensive position, and I don't want to leave my defensive position. Okay, what do we got up here? Have we done anything? We've not done anything here yet. Uh, move him there. Let's take one of the MP3. Move it next to him. And that should give me... Um, I guess it doesn't. I guess you have to not move to get uh, assistance. But I can still attack. So let's, let's go with the infantry first. Infantry is better clearing out infantry and buildings. There we go. Let's take this PZ2. Oh, I don't have any movement left. Oh, well. The infantry will move up. I think I attacked with them already. That was the reason. Let's move those engineers up. I think that is going to be it. Take a look at a chat. Yep. Everybody's talking amongst themselves. I was getting into some boxing chat. That's always cool. Uh, <laughs> Don't think, I don't think, yeah, I think we're probably just going to leave that heavy infantry there to secure our supply lines. I don't think, he, well, what he might do is move, try to move an infantry here, and that will cut my supply lines. But i got a couple units that can respond. Plus, hopefully next turn I'll be able to take this village here, which will open up my supply lines again. So I'm just going to have to see what happens. water to drink because I'm talking so much. Ah, my poor fuck, my poor machine gun punctures. I have a feeling I'm going to lose that infantry. It's only got two strength points left. Or, yeah, he moves right there and cuts my supply lines again. 
myself. Yeah, those guys are definitely gonna be moving back. Ooh, smart moves. He's doing everything he can to make sure I can't open up the supply lines easy. Well, they're gonna be fighting in that 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 hole for a little while. See, that is one thing the AI is really good at. Cutting off your lines of supply. Oh, we've been going a little bit over an hour. I think we can probably sneak in one more turn. Fighter strafing armor. Not the smartest thing you've ever done. Yeah. Taking bad casualties because I'm out of supply. No! Oh, flamethrowers! Ah! Soviets do love cutting supply lines everywhere. That's a core unit. That's going to cost me to try to replace. Next battle. Oh, yeah, lots of infantry up here. Maybe I shouldn't have pushed these guys forward. <laughs> I would say things are getting desperate on many fronts right about now. I bore bunkers. One thing about the Soviets, there are always more of them. Always have so much friggin' vehicles and infantry everywhere. Severely, severely outnumbered. Remember what I said about, oh, I don't think he's got any units over in this sector? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, mummy. All right. 47 points, I just... Ugh. Oh, and he knocked out one of my air units by attacking the... Uh, poop. <laughs> so, let's see if we can knock out that T-34. Most. All right. Push you back. Move you there. Move you there. Ha! Open up supply lines a little bit. He's looking so grim. All right. These guys. Right there. Oh, you know what? I should have moved. I should have moved there. That opened up my supply. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Actually, no. That'll do it, too. Clear those guys out. Advance into there. Okay, that'll open up the pocket again. Ugh. Oh, I can't even shoot. Oh, I'm out of supply. I'm out of ammo, evidently. Ugh, that's not good. That's why you don't want to be cut out of supply. Hopefully, I'll be able to hold this. Now, nope, he's just going to move one guy there to cut me off again. Ah, stupid. Well, you know what? Screw it. These guys. <laughs> Fine. I need these guys back in the other direction. These guys. Ah, the infantry. Good luck. That's all I can say. 
but I should be able to hold there pretty well. So, alright, we got that. That anti-aircraft gun is not going to do jack against the tank, so we're not even going to shoot at it. Ah, stop running away. Those guys, as much as I hate to do it, I'm going to have to reinforce them a little bit just so they can continue to hang on. Let's get these stugs. 40 gold! Ugh. Out of reinforcement points, basically. Yep, I'm getting overextended here. He's got too much infantry. So let's just pull back. All right, have these guys pull back as well. Okay, cut my infantry off here. Let's at least knock out those artillery pieces. Armored cars fighting some infantry. Let's see, what have I got left? Oh, he's got something. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna chase down those stupid T 34s. Oh, come on! Oh, and there's a KV unit. KV 1. Yeah, wonderful. Things have gone from bad to worse. Yeah, nah, screw it. I need to take out that tank. There we go. Boom. Stupid T-34. Oh, yeah. Let's get these guys back home. Yeah. All right. That's fine. You know what? I can't load up my, my false Jaeger as... Uh, I just don't have the cash for it. But I can use them as normal infantry. So they are going to have to start moving forward and probably take me a half a dozen turns to get to the front line. But it's better than them sitting back there not doing a damn thing. Yeah. All right. Well, I think this is going to be the last turn. So I think I'm done with everybody up here. Yeah, I'm done with everybody. So let's go ahead and finish off the Soviet turn because things have gone from bad to worse. <laughs> and see next time when we play what we can salvage out of this mess. Ah! Four casualties. Yeah, I'm saying I knew he was going to cut the line. I may have to restart this scenario. It is not going well for me. And that is the problem with uh, you know, Order of Battle and any of these Panzer, Panzer Corps games, Allied General. I usually have to do them two or three times to figure out what the computer is doing, what's thinking. They're kind of they're kind of like puzzle games. You need to have the right units and the right forces in the right places and know where the un enemy's going to attack at. So yeah, it sometimes takes me two or three playthroughs to get these scenarios. So we may not be continuing this one. We may be starting this one over. Yeah, just pushing all over the place because I don't have forces everywhere. Oh, while that's going on, see what's going on in the chat. Uh, yep. More sports chatting going on, which is perfectly fine. Yeah, cut those guys off. I'm really going to have to restart this one. This has ended in abject failure. 
like I said, it's not really that surprise, much of a surprise. I think the last scenario, the one before this, I did it three times before I was able to win. So. Those four anti-aircraft guns can't even do any damage back to those T-34s. Yeah, this one's getting restarted. Not sure I'm going to stream the restart, but uh, definitely wanted to get this out there to show people uh, what was up with uh, Order of Battle. So yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's kind of ending in an abject failure for me. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and call this one done and in the can in the stream. Uh, yeah, Al, <laughs> you can rally OG now. No, no, I can't. Not from this one. Um, <laughs> thanks to everybody that actually ended up uh, coming in, watching. Uh, give a quick uh, shout out to everybody. Al Red Sox fan, we know him, we love him. Al First Generation and Stratomatic Delaware. Thanks, Chris, for stopping by. Uh, itinerant Hobbyist, Chrissy of Oldstone, uh, Ben Hogan. If I missed anybody, I apologize. I'm sorry, but I think that's I think that's what that's going to do it for the day. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticism. You know where to put them. In the comment section. <laughs> I'll see everybody next time. See ya.